Yo guys, what's up? I promised you tanks. You're getting tanks. After Kristallnacht on the 9th of November 1938 and the overnight hate against the Jews, we are once again focusing on Sudetenland. The Germans had been occupying it since September 1938 and were looking to kick off the war soon. And yes, they had tanks. In 1932, the designs for a tank were already made and in 1934, one year before focusing on megaships, Hitler already saw the first example of those designs, the Panzer one. Basically, it would become a training tank. So Hitler shipped a few of them off to Spain to test them out in the Spanish Civil War. But they did so well despite a few minor mistakes, that Hitler kept using them until the end of 1941. Insane if you think about it. Because it was actually very, very small, puny compared to other tanks, really. Uh, it only had room for two soldiers and only had two machine guns. It had very, very thin armor, but it could race up to 31 miles per hour. That's 50 kilometers an hour eight times the speed of the Mark I tank. The company that made the Panzer I was Henschel, remember that name for later. But Hitler wanted to get all the flaws out of the series, so he ordered different companies to create larger, stronger and better Panzer tanks. So designed in 1934, the Panzer II was available in 1935 and more Panzers were coming. A total of 1800 Panzer IIs were built and they would even see the north of Africa being put out of production at the end of 1942 but they would actually survive until 1945. They had been made by Daimler-Benz. Krupp another company had designed the Panzer IV in 1936. The Panzer IV was double the size of the Panzer II and four times the size of the Panzer I and was created one year after the Panzer II with a Panzer III on the way for 1939. Believe it or not, the Panzer III was made available three years after the Panzer IV. So basically Hitler was moving all his pawns to Sudetenland closer to the Polish border with North Czechoslovakia. So Hitler had already incorporated Sudetenland into Germany on October 1st of 1938. But he waited for another five and a half months until the 15th of March 1939 to go for the rest of Czechoslovakia. But why? Well, because Czechoslovakia had a new president called Emil Hacha since November 1938. But this man was unable to sort out all the military problems after he saw his funding cut from France and Great Britain. Because Hacha had used all that funding to dig himself in, in Prague, afraid of Germany's Wehrmacht. He didn't spend this money to protect his borders, so he just used it on himself. And now that he lost his money and his fortification, Hitler invited him over for tea in Berlin. So the issue was settled on the 15th of March, because Hacha suffered a heart attack in Hitler's office in Berlin. They actually had to keep this man awake to sign the papers before he got medical treatment. On the 16th of March 1939, Hitler went to Prague himself to give the speech. He claimed Bohemia and Moravia in the north and had a good starting point now to kick off his own great war. And Poland was next on the list. His so-called Anschluss was going well and stage two of Der Anschluss was a success. March 16 in Prague. That's where we leave the story for today because the whole Panzer series from 1 to 4 was about to get unleashed on Poland. 
Hacha was appointed as the head of the new protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, and this region would remain German property until the liberation of Prague on May 6, 1945. Slovakia became a puppet state and would be happy to assist the Wehrmacht in a future war for more territory. The Jews were finished and the ghetto campaign could start. See you on the next one guys. Peace.